You might remember my first attempt at automating the task of counting small parts. This is my first try, and I built it to see if this was a task I could do through my own skills. But first, let's back up a bit. Why do I need a machine for counting parts? You might know, I make do-it-yourself arcade kits. You get all the electronics and pre-cut panels to build your own mini arcade. Just like why IKEA includes all the nuts and bolts in their furniture flat packs, I include all the nuts and bolts in my kits. Without that hardware, the kit takes on a much larger burden to the builder to complete. Said hardware is something like over 100 individual fastener pieces, and I've been counting these by hand for years. Yes, I count each individual part. I read many comments on this video about why not weigh these parts instead of counting them. And maybe I didn't convey my goal well enough. I want to automate the task. Not only do I want to avoid counting these parts, I want them sorted too. Weighing the parts would still require processing and handling by a human. The goal here is to have a machine to count and sort while I do something else productive. The mechanics to sort and count are a bit easier to achieve than sort and weigh, but I digress. So what's wrong with this first version? Well, it was built around one specific size part, and changing the machine to count a different part was cumbersome and time-consuming. The machine was also a bit large for its purpose, so it sat in my closet being unused. I either scrapped the machine to recoup the space it occupied, or rebuild it into something useful. Three months ago, I gave it a second chance. Electromechanical machines are a huge, time-consuming endeavor, but considering the time I've spent doing this by hand and will continue to do in the future by counting parts without a machine, I can invest that same amount of time to make a machine to do it. Uh, so for the naysayers, why not buy a machine? Well, a story about buying a machine isn't a good story. Why not hire a fulfillment house to do this counting and sorting for you? Well, I don't know if you noticed, but budget is kind of a big deal here. And again, you're on YouTube. Do you want a story about me buying stuff or making something? Okay, so before doing any project, I had to do my technical research. And the, my favorite phase about extensive technical research is consulting YouTube. So I look for something already in the industry that's using a novel idea that I could replicate. After hours of research, I found a prescription pill counter machine marketed toward independent pharmacies. It was simple, and I was convinced the core principles it used I could translate here. So this machine and my machine functions on the principles of a circle's geometry. When that circle or disk rotates at a constant angular velocity, that's like RPM, the further from the center of the circle, the faster the velocity is at that point. That's angular velocity in this case. So objects further from the center will travel at a faster rate. If we constrain that object's path to something linear, we can use the increased velocity to create some distance between the faster object and the object traveling slower behind it. That distance, or separation, allows the induction sensor to detect individual items and count them. We essentially need that space in between the items to get a successful detection. The way this machine works is identical to my first parts counter, except the actual counter. The business end of this machine is an induction sensor. It's the same sensor used in many 3D printers with metal print surfaces for bed leveling calibration. Driving the main disk is a slave Arduino, which has a belt drive to the main record platform. Power to this is done with a relay. The master Arduino is free to monitor the important functions, like counting, and triggering the relays to stop the record platform, then trigger the indexing motor to index the sorting cups. All of this is jammed in as little space as possible to make a machine that looks like a washing machine for vinyl records. That was an accident. A lot of people commented on the previous video about my love for yogurt since that machine used yogurt cups. Well, I like yogurt as much as the next guy, but that love was misinterpreted. I needed smaller cups for this new machine, and I want to confess my true love is applesauce. Apples are the most American produce next to corn, but uh, corn is gross, and who would eat a corn pie? So anyway, I'm off topic here. These lunch-style applesauce cups are the secret to this machine. 
I rewrote the code for a 4x20 LCD screen, replaced a potentiometer with a rotary encoder, and added some features of extra counting modes to the machine's functions. Basic use remains the same. Setting the desired part count is done with the rotary encoder, and triggering run will start the machine. When the set count limit is reached, the machine indexes the cups, and the cycle repeats until all eight cups are filled. There is also a mode that will just count indefinitely. This can be done for inventory reasons, but was really made to check the machine's accuracy by doing repeated counts and mapping out those statistics. So how accurate is it? It's near 100% accurate for larger parts, something like number 8 and number 10 nuts, but smaller nuts like number 4 nuts, these are imperial sizes, occasionally tend to get too close for the sensor to catch every single one, and the accuracy reduces back to... 96 to 98%. Uh, that gets a little better the larger sample rate, but I'm kind of impatient for this video. But there are other issues with this machine. Hitting that budget of $50 that I set for myself to start with is mainly due to the material costs. Wood. A few plywood that's all bendy and warpy where you don't want it to be is what I've used in this machine. To compensate for the extreme warp on the main rotating disc, I added this I added these dragging fins to ride on the disc, which closes the boundary gap between the edges and the disc, but washers still manage to get under and jam the machine. This warpingness can also drop the part out of the sensor range if the sensor is not set correctly in the first place. Still, these downfalls are offset with one big benefit. Switching from different size parts is very easy. I have plans to add some sort of agitator arm to disrupt the parts when they get stuck at the gate entrance, and maybe add some sort of tension plus a set screw to open the gate. Redoing it with a straighter material like acrylic would be ideal, but for now I'm going to be using this machine to count nuts, which hopefully will reduce my burden of counting parts by about half. Hopefully this video shares some ideas on how you can do your own automation for cheap. And as always, thanks for watching.